Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of Computer Organization and Architecture. Today's topic is Introduction to Memory. In this video, I will be talking about what is computer memory and what are the various characteristics of the memory. Let us begin. First, let us have a look about the memory. See, all of you must be aware about some this particular term. See, in the case of the computers, the memory is the most, most essential component for the normal functioning of any system. Means, without memory, computer is not capable to perform the simple task. Means, memory is very important for the computer. So, computer memory, when we are talking about, it is nothing but, it is a kind of any physical device. You must have seen also the memory. And the memory is used to store the information, data or the instructions. And the information can be stored temporarily as well as the permanently. So, depending upon the application. So, what you can say, memory is the collection. It is the collection of the storage unit which stores binary information and the binary information is available in the form of the bits. You have to remember it. It means the memory block when we are talking about, so the memory block is split into a small number of components, some smaller, smaller components and each and every component is known as a cell. So each cell of a memory, it has a unique address to store the data into the memory and when we are talking about the address of that particular cell, so address range from 0 to certain value minus 1. Let me explain you with the help of an example. Suppose we are saying that the size of computer memory is 64k words. 1k means 1024. So 64k means 64 into 1024 which is coming out as what? 65,536 location source cell. It means the address of the memory, it varies from 0 to this particular value minus 1. Means 65,535. So, this is how you can calculate the address of a memory cell also. So, in the case of the computer systems, what we need? We need computer memory and why this computer memory is required? To store various types of data. Data may be in the form of the image, in the form of video, in the form of audio, some text, some documents and whenever we require, we can ret retrieve the data. Means that must be the property. So, depending upon the requirement, data can be retrieved. Now, we are going to talk about the characteristics of the memory. So, here I have listed out the eight different parameters, means different features of the memory system, which have been actually, you must be aware of it. What is the location of the memory, capacity of memory, unit of transfer, access methods, performance, physical type, physical characteristics and the organization. So, now I will be talking about on all these eight parameters. First, let us discuss about the location. When we are talking about the location of the memory, means definitely we must be talking about CPU memory, internal or external memory. So, location actually represents the, where is the location of the memory in the computer itself. So, internal memory, it is inbuilt in a computer memory and internal memory is also known as a primary memory, right? The example of primary memories, you can say registers, cache, main memory. And when we are talking about the external memory, means external memory, it is a something, some separate storage device from the computers. Means it is connected with the computer, but not available within the computer. Like disk, tape, USB pen drives, etc. So these are the various features upon which you can define it. Second parameter is capacity. Capacity means this is the most important feature of the computer memory. What is the word size? Word size means natural unit of organization. Number of words or bytes. 
so you must be aware whenever you are uh, talking about the memory you must be talking what is the size of memory what is its capacity right so the storage capacity can vary in internal and external memory it is not uh, mandatory that the capacity of internal and external memories must be same external devices storage capacity is measured in the terms of bytes whereas the internal memory is measured with bytes or words and the storage word length see when we are talking about the storage word length so it can vary like 8 16 32 bits next important parameter characteristic is the access methods see memory can be accessed via four different modes let us talk one by one first is the sequential sequential access method see sequential access method it is used in a data storage device just to read store data sequentially from computer memory means whatever the data is being required to read out it must be taken out sequentially if you are talking about starting from a to z so then first a then b then c accordingly right and here access time depends on location of the data and previous locations and the example of the sequential memory is the tape next important access method is the dma dma or direct direct memory access so this method allows input output devices to access or retrieve data directly from the main memory and you are aware that individual blocks have unique address and access is done just by jumping to the vicinity plus the sequential search and here access time depends upon the location and the previous location and the example of direct access method is disk third is the random random access method see individual addresses identify locations exactly and access time is independent of of the locations or previous access so random access method is a method used to randomly access data from the memory it's here the access is not being done sequentially it is opposite to the sequential access method right which we have discussed over here sequential let me give you an example of the random access memory uh, for example uh, if you have to go from a to z right if you have to go from a to z in a random access so we can directly jump to any specific location we can jump to c we can jump to then g then h anywhere but what happened in the case of the sequential method we have to follow the sequence starting from first to last and the fourth important access method is the associative access method associative it is a special type of memory and this actually optimizes search performance through the defined data to directly access the stored information based on the memory access means data is located just by comparing with the content or a portion of the store and access time is again independent of the location or previous access and cache is the example of the associative access method coming to the next unit of transfer unit of transfer from the name itself you can define it measures the transfer rate of bits that can be read or write in or out from the memory device at which particular rate data can be transferred into the memory or at which particular rate data can be taken out from the memory right it means the data transfer rate can be different for the internal and external memory for internal memory the transfer rate of bits is mostly used in to the word size but when we are talking about the external memory here transfer rate of bits or unit it is not always equal to the word length it is always greater than a word or may be referred as a block so this is how you can define the unit of transfer for internal and external memory next is the organization see memory organization it defines actually the physical structure of bits used in the memory 
So this is nothing but the physical arrangement and it is not always obvious. So the example is the interleave. So this is how you can define the next characteristic which is about the organization. Next is the performance. See, performance of memory, it can be uh, understand clearly by dividing it into the three parts. First is the excess time. So in random access memory, it represents the total time, right? Excess time is what? The total time taken by memory device to perform read or write operation that an address is sent to the memory. That is what the excess time. Memory cycle time, total time required to access, right? Total time, how can you define it? It is the total time which is required to access the memory block and additional required time before starting the next process means time required to access plus recovery. So this is how you can define the memory cycle time. And third point is the transfer rate. Transfer rate means it describes the transfer rate of data which is used to transmit uh, memory to and from. Right? Like from an internal or external memory. So bit transfer can be different for different ex internal and external device. So transfer rate is actually related to the data which can be moved either into the memory or from the memory. It may be in the internal memory or from the external memory, anywhere it can be. Next is the physical type. Physical type is the another characteristic. It defines the physical type of the memory which is used in the computers. The examples may be semiconductor memory, RAM, magnetic, examples are disk and tape, optical, CD, DVD and other types are bubbles, hologram. See, so it actually defines the physical, which type of particular memory is used in the computers. And the last is the physical characteristics. Physical characteristics means it specifies physical behavior of the memory like whether the memory is volatile or non-volatile or non-erasable memory. You are aware with the volatile memory. Volatile memory is also known as a RAM. It means which requires power to retain stored information and in case of the power loss, stored data will be lost. And non-volatile memory is what? That is a permanent memory, permanent storage that can be used to obtain any stored information even when the power is off. So when we are talking about the non-erasable memory means the type of memory that cannot be erased even after the uh, when the manufacturer has manufactured it. Because at that particular time during the manufacturing, manufactured ROM are programmed. Power consumption, decay, these are also the physical characteristics. Means how much power is being consumed by that particular memory? What is the decay along with the time? So these are all the physical characteristics of the memory. I hope all the points must be clear to you. Thank you so much for watching this video.